everyone a warm welcome uh, to this webinar thank you for joining us in this session on uh, building a successful career in the digital marketing space uh, we have our uh, expert speaker mr ajit as well with us today uh, and we'll have him join shortly uh, hi everyone perfect so to get started i think the agenda the way we had structured it was uh, Just looking at uh, you know why should you be exploring a career in the digital marketing space? Uh, what are the career paths and sectors you can really focus on? Uh, then after that we'll have the special session with uh, Ajit, with him sharing his growth journey and how he's built his uh, skill sets in this uh, very innovative space over the last 10 to 15 years. And uh, post that we'll move on to discussing the different types of uh, marketing roles. Uh, growth potential of these roles, and end with a Q and A. So overall, it should take us around an hour to get through this uh, agenda. In the meanwhile, I mean, after Ajit session, we'll have a short Q and A. If you all have any questions specifically for Ajit in terms of uh, his journey, sure. So looking at the first uh, section is, you know, why should you look at a career in the digital marketing space? i think we all know that it's a very fast growing space but over the last few years it's accelerated even more uh, and it's growing at 30 to 40% over the last few years and it's slated to become over 50000 crores by 2025 uh, what this would mean is that actually the digital media would be larger than print or television in the next 4 to 5 years so in terms of giving growth opportunities which are accelerated and you know you can grow faster a digital marketing and digital advertising is a great space to be in the uh, second is obviously i think uh, you know a lot of us in this uh, webinar are uh, on the correct side of 30 and youth definitely have a significant advantage being digital natives and you know a lot of uh, folks under 30 have uh, had the mobile phones right since they were teenagers and uh, using social media or any of the apps or new features comes very naturally uh, to everyone below 30 years so it helps in terms of innovating and trying out new things online uh, youth is actually at an advantage here compared to a lot of sectors where experience would matter more than youth. the third point is like uh, you know while it's a demanding career option <coughs> there's constant innovation over here which gives the platforms Uh, given the platforms, you know, have a continuous innovation. It also pushes you as a to continuously learn and copy. Yeah, we get bored or stagnant because constantly you have to innovate and learn about new things uh, over the period of time. The fourth point is you, know, you can see the impact of your work within a few hours. Multiple capabilities and skill sets. So if you're a mix of like analytical skills design and creative skills or you have uh, technology skills or you want to learn data science for example digital marketing allows you to explore all of these skills uh, in one role that is most other industries you would be focused on uh, multiple roles so am i audible or? yeah to nil i think you're a bit choppy in the middle but you're okay now all right <clears throat> sure so moving on to like careers and paths you can look at uh, to build on i think there are four sectors i want to highlight the first is you know there are a lot of consumer sectors uh, which we'll discuss in a bit more detail then you have startups or you have b2b companies and you have digital agencies as well so i think there are four sectors where you know you can really look at uh, building your career in So let's go through it uh, one by one. So first we have the consumer sector. This is a pretty broad category. We have clubbed it, but it basically means that a lot of FMCG companies, BFSI companies, which is banking and financial services, 
Uh, you have retail companies, you have hospitality and travel companies, uh, gaming companies, and even education companies, which uh, you can focus on. So some examples of these companies would be like a Procter and Gamble, Malia, Kotak Mahindra Bank, uh, you know, in the BFSI space, and obviously other from Sundar Mutual is here as well. So that would also fall under consumer sector, where the goal is how do I engage and uh, acquire customers online instead of uh, doing them offline. The second segment is startups. I think these startups usually either they are creating new segments or innovating in existing segments. So some of the examples would be Dream11, Bank Bazaar, Hatha Book, uh, Misho. I'm sure a lot of y'all have heard of these uh, startups. Big baskets have been in the news a lot recently with the COVID uh, issue. And even edu education startups like an academy, which are bringing like online test prep uh, into the digital world. The next set of companies is B2B companies. Uh, this would include uh, companies like Trendworks, View AI. Uh, there are SaaS companies which you know target the Western markets. There are also B2B companies which are focused on the Indian market, as well as those focused on the Western market. So you have a broad mix. So you know, if you're someone who would like to explore the B2B side, there are a lot of digital marketing career opportunities on the B2B side as well. And uh, finally, obviously, uh, you have digital agencies, both uh, independent digital agencies like Social Beat, as well as large group networks like Group M, uh, which you know continue to scale up as partners to brands in terms of their digital marketing uh, requirements. So overall, across these four segments, <laughs> I think the career opportunities continue to be strong because most of these companies do have either full-fledged digital marketing teams in-house or at least people uh, who drive the digital initiatives uh, internally. So in terms of where you could apply, there are a whole range of companies. We'll discuss it a little later as well in terms of where you could apply for some of these uh, roles and what's the best approach to you know initiating conversations with companies. This brings us to the most interesting part of this webinar, which is a growth journey with uh, Ajit. I think he's had a tremendous career. I think, uh, Ajit, would you like to uh, start off with just sharing a little bit about your journey and then, you know, add a few questions for you as well uh, as you go along? <laughs> Hello? Hi, is it, am I audible? Yeah, uh, not very clear, Sunil. Uh, hello? Hello? Yes, could you dial? Uh, could you just share a little bit about your journey, Ajit, uh, before we ask us a few specific questions? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, so I've been uh, largely in the financial services space for the last 15, 16 years uh, since the time I started my career. And uh, uh, did I start off with a very marketing-oriented uh, role? Not really. I started off uh, actually in sales, uh, and I started off uh, in uh, in a very uh, interesting sales uh, journey, which essentially was um, activating the PSU network of banks to sell mutual funds okay. uh, you know back in uh, early 2000s uh, the only thing we knew was the PSU channel had uh, am I audible Sorry? yes that's it yeah you are okay yeah, yeah sure so back back in the early 2000s right uh, the, 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 re the real reason for PSU uh, potential was all about branch network the fact that they had 50,000, 60,000 physical branches. And if you could activate the, the PSU branches to actually start selling mutual funds, and everyone felt the mutual fund space will actually start to grow dramatically because just the sheer reach of PSUs around the country. So we started right. talking to SBI, Indian Overseas Bank, Indian Bank, and that's how I started off my career in sales. And then I gradually shifted uh, more into uh, uh, a marketing uh, oriented role. Um, uh, but I think the interesting thing uh, what ha what happened post that, and you know, a lot of what we learned in, in marketing back in B school, and then in the early 2000s, were uh, largely in the you know uh, were uh, 
advertising oriented especially in financial services right when you know we're talking about a very very abstract product it's not very uh, nothing tangible it's all a uh, highly intangible product experience that you have to sell so a lot of it was actually advertising oriented creatives and stuff like that um and then uh, you know uh, early 2000 you know like but 5 years later i actually had a break in um, in one of the startups and uh, in fact i uh, suneel you mentioned bank bazaar is one of the startups in your uh, in your presentation so i did get a chance to work with bank bazaar uh, and the, the interesting part of bank bazaar is i actually set up their savings and investment business um, and uh, when i went to bank bazaar yes i did have a fair idea of digital because uh, you know i i uh, a, a lot of my uh, work uh, in the mutual fund space were uh, in in areas of technology and implementing it has they talked to you guys uh, maybe in the few days if you are interested but uh, uh, mutual funds ironically actually one of the more tech oriented digital financial services products in the country uh, you know so what's happening today the you know in the world on covid uh, bizarrely you know i belong to an industry that is actually growing still uh, and uh, you know so people continue to invest money and uh, the good thing is because there is uh, there's very very little physical infrastructure needed it's highly extremely tech oriented extremely digital so we'll talk about that uh, over time but i think so when i went to bank bazaar my 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 mandate was to set up the savings and investment business and uh, that is how my 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 breakthrough into uh, into into real digital came in uh, and today right um, and then i you know after a few years in bank bazaar i went back into mutual funds and today i work for central mutual uh, so uh the way i look at digital um is in two parts uh it's not it's it's not restricted only to digital marketing uh so the marketing aspect to me is is largely experience content communication uh and and to me marketing is and only digital i i i don't know if that will ever change at least for the foreseeable future i could i can talk for about 20 years from now i don't know if you can see anything beyond that but uh, you know if you really if you really believe that all that's happening around the world today will will result in a massive shift in terms of how businesses and consumers are going to behave uh, uh, you know a year down from now uh, i think one thing is for sure that the emphasis on digital has only gone up in terms of marketing itself right so i look at digital marketing as 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 uh, as core marketing i, I don't think uh, there is anything else in marketing it's marketing essentially will be digital so a lot of us are will be taught to think digitally first and the second part of 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 digitization itself is in terms of uh, uh, in in terms of transaction experience or in terms of fulfillment itself right uh, so whether you look at buying a financial services product or you're looking at buying an fmcg product if you're looking at buying experiences like um, uh, you know an air ticket or 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 a hotel booking all of this will actually be done digitally right um and uh, it you know i could give you an example of of delivery for example you know uh, today you know we all look at swiggy and zomatos as 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 a physical fulfillment so there's there's a physical angle around it right there's a digital acquisition and a physical fulfillment and guess what happened we all spoke we've, we've been talking about uh, you know contactless delivery for for a while at least in the vc network we keep talking about how drones will eventually replace people and it may happen sooner than later or later right it's we're almost there and you know today you know the guys like zomato and swiggy are already talking of contactless delivery in a slightly different context but a lot of this is actually happening right. as we speak so uh, my understanding of digital is not restricted only to digital marketing i think it's the entire digital experience the entire value chain from how you acquire a customer to how you fulfill a customer uh, will be completely digital and and that's really what uh, my journey my career has always been uh, over the last uh, 10 years itself um, and uh, i continue to do a lot of work in that space at sundra mutual uh, for uh, uh, you know for two 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 things which i can highlight one is uh, today sundra mutual is perhaps the 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 most visible digital asset management company in the country one and two um, our our largest growth in terms of uh, new business comes from digital uh, while we have a large section of financial advisors selling us offline uh, but the new business growth our that the largest share is actually from the digital channel which to me is very very promising for a brand like ours so, so yeah. you know you have always been like a strong promoter of core digital 
I think from your personal perspective and, you know, even the team members which you look to recruit for your content team or, you know, your internal team, uh, could you share, like, what kind of skill sets and personality type uh, do you look at when you're recruiting, uh, you know, team members for your team? Yeah. Uh, so, that's, that's actually a very interesting question, Sunil, because, uh, you know, I've gone through an evolution over 15 years because when I, when I joined, uh, you know, uh, the corporate world 15, 16 years ago, our understanding of marketing was very different. And then when I became right. a manager five years, six years later, and when I started hiring people, what you look what you look for in terms of skill set was very different as well. But today, when I look at people, right, um, I think a lot of people are are binary. Either they have a completely digital understanding, or they don't have a digital understanding, right? So I think uh, right. it's not. I don't think people are are any more, you know, hazy about it. They either completely understand it or they don't understand it. So I think. More and more, we're going to find people who more, who understand it completely. They're not understanding it. So I think let's look at that section of the world. But within that, I think what we really look at is uh, for someone who's able to understand the overall spectrum of digit, of, of of digital itself, right? Um, so I think if you're looking at digital marketing, um, you know there is a there is a need for people to understand that digital marketing is not just to do digital ads, right? It's about how you how do you acquire customers, how do you retain a customer, how do you engage with customers. So I think the engagement understanding is something which is very very critical uh, so it is not it's not about just doing banner ads or display ads or search ads it's not that it's about once you acquire a customer what do you do with that customer how do you retain the customer and and and, and there's a very interesting saying especially in the in the in the financial services world it's about how many more products can you sell to the same customer this lifetime value right so the fact you can't keep acquiring customers every day uh, it's going to be prohibitively expensive to keep acquiring customers every day. So you've got to engage yeah. with the same customers wanting to consume the same you know, multiple products. So I think from a, from a, from a, from a, in terms of skill sets, what we do look for is, uh, is for people who understand uh, uh, customer engagement. How do, we, how do you actually build customer engagement tools? How do you build customer engagement assets? So content, for example, is one, is one example of, of, of customer engagement, right? Someone who understands content. So content could be written, could be verbal, could be video. Uh, people who understand that sense. So a lot of the storytelling today is very, very important. So people who understand storytelling is um, uh, is, is very, very critical. And I think the uh, the second part, which I I I don't see it too much uh, in in pressures, but I think the more and more we start engaging with 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 with, with the younger group, I think people need to start having a sense of business itself. Because ultimately, business is economics, right? Uh, so I think if you blend these two, uh, I think uh, you know that's really the most important part. But you know, that's the kind of skill set to look for. Just see someone, uh, you know, just does not need the digital skills, but also understand business side of uh, exactly. you know, the things. And exactly. Merge those exactly. two elements so together. To, exactly. So you don't need to understand every single nuance of of an industry, right? Because you you know you're new to an industry, you don't need to understand the industry entirely, but you need to have a fair understanding of of, of how business is run. Right? Uh, once you have that and then you blend your overall digital, you know, uh, understanding itself, then you're looking at a blog post by candidate. So I think, you know, I, I look for that in, 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 in resources. I look for that in terms of talent. Uh, if you can find people with uh, a good digital understanding with uh, a, a, a reasonable handle on how to run a business, and you put those two together, you know, you, uh, right. you know, you have, you, you, I'm sure you'll have a good career. You're able to put those two things together. So, like, would you see, like, for a digital marketer, for example, who's looking to apply to Sundaram Mutual, apart from, like, say, a Google AdWords certification, even like an AMT, uh, you know, mutual fund uh, exactly. certification, exactly. like, would that, like, be a yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's a, a, a bit of yes and no for you. So I think, you know, there are two ways of looking at it. Uh, for a lot of us who've been in the space for so many years, we, we look at AMCA exam and say it's not very, you know, it's very easy to pass it. But, you know, look at it from a pressure's point of view, it's tough, right? I mean, uh, this can be Greek and Latin. It's, uh, you know, it can be tough. But, uh, that, you know, if you can get that, it's fine. But I think it's a, it's, it's a couple of steps below that, right? Uh, just to understand how financial services is. So, for example, when I when I got my first job, I had no idea what equity was and what fixed income was. But right. today, with all that's happening around the world, you cannot not know it, right? Uh, you should know how credit card business functions. You should know how a bank operates. You should know how a mutual fund operates. You should know how an insurance company operates. You should know how an airline company operates. Because there is so much content available, and the more you read, 
the more you hear the more you watch you become aware so i think what we are really looking for is more awareness than than anything else and it's just business awareness right uh, because today that's merged right the two roles are very very tightly linked because a marketer today right. is essentially a business owner as well he is no more just a marketing manager right he becomes a business manager today right because you're 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 in charge of it. when you look at the overall the, the definition of the, the, the you know you see these fancy designations of of growth officers right a lot of startups seem to have growth officers today I mean, at the end of the day a growth officer is actually a business officer he is responsible for both spends and revenue right, um, right. so you can't be a growth officer if you don't have an understanding of how business runs so to me ultimately these two roles are kind of eluding they're kind of you know you're looking at it as one role so you need to have a fair understanding of of of, of business itself not detail but at least just awareness will help always help i think And I, I think yeah, that's it. I think uh, the common challenge is, you know, a lot of uh, folks from the offline marketing space, for example, either they have been in events uh, or you know, print media or even like from television, for example, uh, looking to move to the digital space. So, any guidance, you know, when you met uh, either candidates like that or like friends in your network, what kind of advice would you give them of making that transition from offline to digital? So Sunil, uh, you know, if I may say this, uh, you know, in a public forum, I, I don't know if I've told you this, but when I look at resources that you have in your in your company, I always compare them with right. the people I see in some of the other industries, especially the media, the old age traditional media, and I've actually worry for the traditional media teams, right? Because that's the difference, right? When I look when I look at young kids in your company, I I I I right. find them having a 360 degree understanding, right? Uh, and they're they're digital first. but they understand different businesses because they have to look at clients also right whereas when i look at some of the the traditional media agencies or media media companies not agencies media companies you look at print or you look at like look at offline that's my big worry uh, uh, and scaling up there is a big challenge so you know when i look at youngsters today uh, it doesn't matter you can join a newspaper company no problem you can join you can join a traditional media company all this you know Traditional, you know, to, tomorrow in in two years time, digital will become traditional media, right? I don't think digital is going to be called new age media any longer. You know, we should, we'll eventually start calling it. I call it core marketing. So it will become traditional media the next three to five years, right? So right. you ultimately skill sets. When you look at skill sets, build your awareness, read up, listen up, look at you know, watch different uh, you know content programs, pick up pick up awareness, increase your awareness levels across businesses. and then focus on your core which is which can be marketing right so i um, yeah, i look at but today i'm very very optimistic when i when i meet youngsters today i think they're exceptionally exceptionally smart uh, most a lot of them seem to have these skills so i think uh, as long as people like us are able to generate jobs uh, uh, which is the tough task right now but as long as we are able to generate jobs i think we can good talent right no definitely uh, thank you so much for sharing that i had a couple of other questions as well but i think maybe we can open it up to the audience and then come back to uh, one or two questions which sure. i had as well. uh sure uh, we should be on to allow the audience questions So any questions uh, from uh, attendees at uh, this point? Think I wish I just opening that up, but Ajit, the other question uh, you yeah. know I for you was in terms of like online learning, like so how how do you keep yourself updated of new things in the digital space? I think it's a constantly evolving space, and it can be challenging. Yeah. And you have obviously uh, you know uh, other business objectives to meet as well, apart from just looking at like digital marketing. Yeah, so, so how do you so kind of me, uh, take yeah? So. So I think the 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 world that we live in, right, is is extremely self-learned, 
kind of motivated environment uh, as long as you have it in you to learn you can learn as much as you want so i'm i'm a huge podcast addict uh, so if you look at my podcast uh, uh, playlist uh, you know so a lot of it is extremely i folderize uh, my, my my podcast channels uh, uh, so a lot of it is actually in this space of of digital marketing especially um, you know what what's coming up with google and facebook because the largest platforms and they launch new features almost every every month uh right. I, i i i keep uh, uh you know learning from uh, i i i so i spend about an hour and a half every day on podcast uh, during my my morning exercise uh that's that's what i listen to uh so podcast for me is an extremely important uh, a very very useful learning channel um second thing i i i, 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 I watch a lot of youtube you see learning a lot yeah absolutely <laughs> no so one and a half, so it's completely right so uh, i i what half an hour of news but the remaining one hour is, is largely learning oriented uh the second thing i i i also do is uh, i i signed up for a couple of online programs uh, uh which I, i and i pick up various modules and 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 read up but i think the key right is to look at 15 20 role model ideas right and uh, you could look at more but what i do is i i look at so for example to give you an uh, you know uh, example if i look at customer experience right and uh, right i look at and if i want and from a from a sundaram mitchell point of view right one of the one of the areas that i really want to improve over the next 3 to 5 years is xp customer experience right so when i look at customer experience there is no textbook which is going to give me how do you solve customer experience right that's if there is good for you but the way i look at it i benchmark and say look is there a company in this world that can give you best customer experience right and to me the answer is amazon right to me amazon for me sure. is my benchmark for customer experience right so so i obviously i mean i'm fortunate to have friends on amazon i'm fortunate to speak with people on amazon for me to understand how they run things what all what sort of systems they have what sort of technology they have what sort of tools they have what sort of people they have and then i obviously study from my point of view how does amazon go about these experiences right so then so that's one way of learning so it, you know it, it it can be it can be difficult but it's a slightly longer term uh, learning way but i look at examples you know uh, uh, and 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 then learn from those apple for example is one which i look at as far as uh, this brand is concerned right? the strength of a brand uh, uh, right and how they did it right so it and that maybe it may come with experience uh, once it asked me 15 years ago i didn't i didn't have this but today for example i do look at various businesses and 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 pick them up for templeton for example in our industry is one benchmark that i have in terms of content itself Right, he right. Is clearly leadership content is Franklin Templeton for me in India. Uh, right, how can we get there? So I look at Templeton as an example to see what they have done, and a lot, a lot of these guys are, are digital first today. No, definitely, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I think some qu- uh, questions which are coming in. One is, I think, is Udemy courses good? Have you, uh, and you know, what are the tools we should learn? I think those are two questions which have come in recently. Uh, Sorry, what what is that? The one is tools, the other uh, one. What are the tools? Uh, Udemy is an online course platform. Correct, which... correct, correct. So is it good? Have you tried it out? Any feedback on that? I I I haven't, but uh, so tools. I think we've talked about it. I think tools are. Uh, I I wouldn't want to talk about a particular tool now, but I think uh, you can use. Uh, Sunil, you may have a better idea on tools, but I think uh, the way I look at it, uh, tools are 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 aids. whatever and today a tool may be relevant tomorrow b tool may be relevant but as many tools as possible is something we should definitely use and leverage in our journey no definitely and no, i think uh, there are plenty of tools that i think each uh, specific role in digital marketing requires like a lot of tools right so i think we'll cover a little yeah. bit of uh, that uh, later uh, i think lots of questions have come in uh, So I think one was we discussed this briefly, Ajit. But like, what are the key traits you you know you try and identify in someone uh, who is looking at uh, career in digital at your company or yeah? So your so so for me, very simply, right? I think business acumen is is core. I, without a business acumen, I don't think you make a good digital marketer. Personally, that's my own that's my opinion. Second thing I believe is that you need to be extremely 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 focused on customer engagement. So a a, a digital marketer is no longer A person who understands just to run Google Ads or etc. etc. Right? You can you can do all of those things, but then ultimately customer retention, customer engagement, cross sell. These are extremely important 
you know elements the third thing is i think you know ultimately you need to be a self learner uh, a, a lot of digital, a lot of marketing has always been that right uh, and it's not if you look at the best marketers over 30 40 years they've all been extremely extremely self learning kind of people right so extrovert yeah. and self learner so these are the kind of traits you look at and that hasn't changed in the digital marketing world either right i think uh, uh, shubham manafa the attendee says also asked what tools we should use i think obviously the basic tools you know first would you would always start with like google analytics uh, facebook has a interactive adwords uh, course for example uh, google adwords those are good places to uh, start learning a little bit about uh, digital and obviously then it would depend a lot on the sector as well right so if you're doing b2b marketing then you would want to learn like hubspot or zoho for example yeah. uh, linkedin so i think a uh, lot of the courses or tools would depend on uh what they're doing yeah i think uh, the other question is uh, you know from uh, manik uh, he's uh, mentioning for a 12 year old traditional creative agency which is offline what are the baby steps mm-hmm. we can to offer the digital, digital solutions to clients uh I think it's... you should take that to me <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, i think uh, please go for it uh, yeah i think No, you should you should take that from you. You know, it's, uh... I think uh, you know not specifically related to uh, career and digital marketing, but I think uh, easiest steps are to uh, start planning with what are the business priorities of the client, right? And see which part of that service you can do at a, a reasonable quality, because you obviously uh, build the trust with the client over a period of time, and you can't use the client as an experimentation tool. Uh, to say okay, I'm going to do like social media marketing for you, or, or right. do X, Y, Z. So you can take uh, you know an area, take up one specific piece. For example, websites. It's uh, you know build a technology team and a designing team to do websites or landing pages. For example, that would be a straightforward way to start doing it. Or for example, something basic, uh, which is uh, more uh, process driven, like uh, ORM. online reputation management where you have to respond to uh, customer queries or complaints most kind of companies need to do this uh, within a few minutes to a few hours so they would need like a lot of manpower and talent to respond to these queries so those are low risk areas relatively to kind of get started uh, in the digital space I think we had I think people have not spoken but I, I think someone had a question on uh... Someone had a question on first. Had a question on how would digital marketing turn digital or turn traditional? Hello. Yeah, please go ahead, Aditya. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, so. Harsh. Uh, 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 the way I the reason the way I uh, I said traditional versus non-traditional, right? So if you look at traditional mediums of of marketing. You look at outdoor. You look at print. You look at television. You have, you have all these channels, and then you had digital over the last seven, eight years, which has kind of become uh, disruptive and non-traditional, so to speak. The reason why I I feel it will become traditional, it's already become traditional, is because today if you look at you look at mobile phone penetration, for example, like forget all the millions and billions of numbers. If you take hundred people today, ninety-two to ninety-three people have mobile phones. If you look at YouTube today, two hundred eighty million active users. On 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 YouTube, which is which is massive a day, right? I think so. I think what's happening today is if you want to talk to a customer, there is no other way to talk to a customer unless you talk to him through these touch points. And today, 92 to 93, you know, customers out of 100 are enabled through mobile. So that is the easiest way to touch a customer. So hence, that becomes your traditional channel today. So that's why I said digital marketing today has become a traditional channel because. Ultimately, what does a marketing want to do? Is to talk to a customer, right? So today, that's how it is. So right from the time you wake up to the time you have to close, to the, to the time you sleep, right? You look at various things that he touches, right? And 85 to 90 percent of his touch points will be digitally enabled. So that's the opportunity for a marketer. What would take its place? I don't know. I have no clue what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know. Um, but. Uh, uh i i i i really don't know so if your question is what is digital marketing replacing if i were to interpret it that way uh uh i i would be very tempted to say print uh is one channel that may be losing relevance uh 
but i'll wait i don't think it's yet there uh, uh, it may lose its relevance for what time but uh, we'll have to wait uh, and see um, uh, i don't know yet right as uh, in the covid times it looks like it's losing relevance but um, i don't know let's let's wait let's wait and watch but uh, ultimately uh, you know you look at you, you look at reaching customers in different ways and and digital it will be your will be your core right so i think a couple of uh, related questions as well i think from Kish, uh, vikas dubey and kishan i think vikas uh, was mentioning that he's a third year bcom student and he's done a digital marketing internship uh, but due to his classes and college he's not able to uh, keep himself updated regularly so he wanted to know is this the right time to apply for a job uh, or you know should he update himself before applying for a job and i think kishan was asking about what podcast would you suggest for budding digital marketers to follow uh, so. yeah so uh, both are kind I, of connected I, in terms I of think, upskilling I, yes i don't know i look i don't know if there's a digital marketing course that you should be signing up for before you go and get a job i don't know that right? i mean they, they, but well applying for these courses and 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 getting yourself certified before actually going and applying for a job can will definitely help you know it depends on on, on the company you're going and in, interviewing with uh, so uh, you know there's, there's there is no right time uh, if, if there is a demand and people like you you get a job and then you can learn on the job where the company is willing to give you that time uh, but uh, which podcast uh, you know i can try and give you let me just look up some of the names i have right now um, um, uh so i i i listen to uh, social media uh, social there's it's called the social media marketing talk show uh, that's one which is a very very nice one then there's a, the, the tech talks daily not ted tech talks daily there's a bloomberg masters in business which is largely digital then there is a google partners uh, podcast which is very very useful there's a financial times tectonic podcast which is also very nice um there's the economist tech edition there's a wall street journal tech edition then there's a you should listen to the hbr the howard business review idea cast right uh, a lot of what hbr has been talking for the last 18 months has been in the realm of digital and tech uh, i don't think they've been talking anything else they've only been talking of tech and digital so you should look so some of, these are some of the names that you have uh, so useful podcast um i think uh, not, yeah, so no, the five six of these uh, i should follow some of these i think also you obviously have scm rash and, you know neel patel i think even like uh, agencies like social yeah. beat we do something called the digital bites uh, google and facebook also take out regular content in terms of updates either to their features or you know how brands can leverage uh, digital more so i think you know obviously podcast plus like video content and also going to some of the blogs and tutorials i think as a combination uh, that would really make you as a candidate to a company stand out right because what happens a lot of times when uh, when we are interviewing at social media people will come and you know they'll put in google analytics on the cv yeah. once you start asking even a few basic questions uh, they won't really be able to un- answer it from a understanding perspective they might know it theoretically but not necessarily in terms of uh, understanding it uh, you know for it to be applied somewhere so in bridging that yep. gap between theoretical knowledge and uh, you know how you can apply it i think that that's one big gap by say overall i need to do So I think other question was I think they are covering a little bit of this, but you know which profile has got more me- uh, opportunities? Uh, Monica Day has asked this: uh, Is it social media or SEO or digital marketing slash advertising? Uh, which one uh, you think I, has? So, um, so I met someone many many years ago at ISB who told me that uh, if, if any company employs somebody called uh, vice president social media. they don't know what they're doing okay so but that was 5 years ago so i don't know i uh, but i actually believe that if a good digital marketer should have all these three four things put together right if you if you want to specialize in one in one it's perfectly fine to start your career in but you know you're not going to have a managing director of social media happening right nor are you going to have a vice president of social media happening so you can always have a good understanding across the board but you can specialize in one when you start your career 
uh, and you know social media seo digital you know performance these are all very 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 important and core to digital marketing yeah I think all, uh, definitely as it. I think we'll cover a little bit on this on uh, the next few slides. I think also it depends a little bit on the skill set of the person as well. So if you're more creative, then you'd rather tilt more towards like content creation and social media campaigns. Okay. Whereas if you're more like analytical, then you know you're probably better off in uh, advertising, for example. And if you have a combination of skill sets, then definitely I think if you're looking to you know be a senior leader. Uh, you know, aspire to become a CMO, for example, someday at a company like Sundaram Mutual, then you not only need digital marketing skills, you need overall marketing skills and also a business uh, perspective and leadership qualities which you can develop over a period of time, not just to lead your teams, but lead multifunctional teams. I think, you know, working with Ajit has uh, taught us a lot. I think it's not just like one or two elements, but you need to cover like a wide Array of uh, skills and leadership qualities to make it uh, successful out there. Yeah. He sees that. Okay, we we'll take one more question, and then you know we, I think we can yeah. show some of the which you have also done, uh, Ajit. I think we were discussing a little bit. I think Harsh had asked, uh, when, uh, how would digital uh, marketing soon traditional? You know, when would that take place? Like when it overtakes uh, traditional. Uh, for a fresh graduate, yeah, somebody, for a fresh graduate, can they join in? Uh, Sorry, Ajit, I think it was breaking up a bit. No, uh, yeah, so I, I, I can hear you now. Yeah. So I think two questions. One was from Sanjana Kungara. Uh, she wants a job, job in digital marketing. I think we have covered this uh, to a large extent. Yeah, we've covered that. Yeah. yeah. I think Vipassana I to... asked uh, on uh, awareness across various business sectors. How should I learn about business terms? <laughs> How can I be aware of? Yeah, so. Yeah, so uh, it's a bit it's a bit more complicated than I probably kind of made it too simple. But uh, I, I, you know, I, I've been a big believer in reading, uh, right? So I, I think there is no other answer to that. Uh, and the only way you can get familiar with uh, various businesses to actually pick up the pick up some uh, you know nice websites uh, and, and 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 read up. Uh, so you know, a lot of business magazines are, are critical. Uh, so as long as you read some of these, you'll you'll automatically pick up, pick them up, right? Uh, so there is no one-stop place, one-stop shop for this. Uh, uh, but uh, but if you're interested in financial services, uh, for example, you should look at uh, you know reading up on financial services and seeing how it works. Or if you're interested in in, in software, if you're interested in, in 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 consumer tech, for example, right? You should you should read up extensively on consumer tech. So what I essentially meant was. Uh, you know, pick up, you know, log in, pick up your phone, pick up your iPad, whatever you want, and 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 and, and try and read up as much as possible. That there's nothing that can give you more knowledge than reading. No, definitely. Ajit, uh, would you mind if we play like some of the videos and show the podcast? Sure, 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 sure. Driving as well. Please go. Uh, please go. Yeah, please go. I think, uh, you know, this was a video which uh, I'll stay now, which. Uh, Ajit had uh, made for his uh, Sundram Equity Fund uh, NFO launch. Just paid out. Now. So I think this uh, video had got like a lot of traction, uh, Ajit. So you know, in terms of your thought process, and you know, I think uh, you know, million views for this particular video. What, what was your thought process? Could you share a little bit on that? Uh, Sunil, I, I lost the first part of your question. What was the question? Uh, like what was your thought process? I think your, the video had got a lot of traction online with over 29 million views, uh, and you know, lots of subscribers to the Sundram channel as well. 
So what was your thought process when coming up with this Senoco launch? And how did this, yeah, uh, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. 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 So just to give a quick background to the audience, so an NFO essentially is a is a new fund launch, right? It's a new product, and uh, the product, the new product is available for 15 days. So we need to get as many customers as possible within those 15 days. That that, that is the objective. So the way the, the the you know we used the video and and YouTube as an anchor for us because we felt that videos are the most engaging. Uh, you know, uh, marketing assets available. Uh, you know, a lot of other assets as well. But we felt video is extremely, extremely useful and continues to be very, very useful. Um, so we tried to build a video around uh, the entire product. Essentially, was was a mother and child kind of nurtured uh, product, and that's how we we positioned it. Uh, you know, that that creative social we uh, came up with. Uh, it was their idea and thought process. Um, and uh, you know. In India, cricket sells, so we tried to bring in a, a cricket element around it, uh, and then we and then we launched it on YouTube uh, via Masthead. Um, so the Masthead essentially is, a, is something like a like a digital billboard, right? Uh, so you know anyone who who who, who 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 launched into YouTube on on a given day got to see it. Uh, so we tried uh, various smart ways to actually retargeting customers as well, so that we were able to build a much larger base of of, of viewers. So what this did on that on you know during that particular period it gave it gave the product and brand significant visibility, um, and we managed to uh, make a, a fairly strong success uh, in terms of the overall product itself. Uh, we've used YouTube extensively, not uh, just for this product. We used it uh, for two three other products. So it's been one of our primary uh, go-to channels for uh, for for mass visibility. It's not. It's not an extreme uh, uh, call-to-action conversion-oriented uh, channel, but you know, does it give you the visibility? Does it give you the eyeballs? It does give you the eyeballs. So for us, it is actually uh, something like television, uh, and uh, you know, I personally believe it's it's more engaging than television. Uh, but uh, you know, that I guess we can have a separate chat on that. But uh, you know, it's something very very similar to television, and it's also very similar to outdoor billboard itself. So. Uh, um, that's what uh, that uh, that campaign was, uh, and it turned out to be very very successful. Right, then maybe you could share a little bit on also you know the podcast and the Paytm money uh, collaborations. Uh, I think those are two innovations which uh, you know you'll have been driving yeah. at some point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, the uh, other two innovations are uh, you know. Sorry. So the other two uh, interesting things that we have done uh, recently is on the podcast channel as well. So uh, for those of you, uh, so Sunil mentioned uh, the the younger side of 30. So um, you know, so let's say early 2000, we actually launched um, a, a monthly periodical called the Wise Investor uh, from Sundar Mutual. Very very content oriented, thought leadership content, very rich. So we used to print about three and a half lakh copies a month at peak. And you send this to you know, so any of your fathers or grandfathers or investors in Sundaram Mutual would have got the wise investor in their house uh, those days. This went through a journey, uh, and then late last year we decided to stop printing it and moved into a complete dig a digital oriented property. So we have the wise investor today, which is a, a blog, and, and it has a massive uh, you know uh, reach in terms of eyeballs. Uh, and what we said, apart from blogs, we said we'll also launch a podcast because, like I said, there are Users increasingly were on Spotify and, and SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts who actually listen to podcasts through the day. So we used that brand, the Wise, and we called it the Wisecast. We launched it. Uh, we launched a podcast channel as well. So we, we are we are India's only mutual fund company that actually produces and creates content on a dedicated podcast. So we don't have an alliance with anyone else. So it's actually ground up that we are building this, and social media actually is built it for us from scratch. Um, so we. Uh, we, are, we are in a schedule where every Wednesday we're going to, we're going to have a, a new podcast up and running. Uh, so why would a customer, why would a random customer subscribe to a mutual fund podcast? I think that's the big question. So the way I look at it, I don't want random customers to come. I want customers who are interested in investing and wealth creation to subscribe. Ultimately, that's the direction that the vice cast will eventually move into. So we're present across Spotify, Apple Music, I mean Apple Podcasts and SoundCloud. This is the wise cast. So we've got the wise investor, which is the blog. We've got the wise cast, which is the podcast. And then, like Sunil mentioned, we have a YouTube channel as well, which has more than one lakh fifty thousand odd subscribers, which is one of the largest in India for mutual funds. The the other innovation is on 
is uh, is on Paytm. Uh, a lot of you are familiar with Paytm. Uh, obviously, it's, it's almost a work today. It is a work today. Um, and uh, the interesting thing is, Paytm actually has moved beyond its wallet. Right? A lot of you, a lot of us know Paytm only as a point of sale payment or a wallet uh, a product. Paytm is actually India's largest digital mutual fund distributor today. And within one and a half years, they've done that, right? Uh, they manage more than 5,000 crores of assets, uh, and it's completely digital, zero offline. Uh, so today, Paytm is is our largest digital distributor of mutual fund schemes, and we've done a lot of work on on you know with Paytm there. Uh, so today, for uh, like I said, for our last NFO that we launched, uh, the new fund that we launched uh, a month ago, uh, almost 10% of its overall subscription came from one particular channel, which is Paytm. Uh, so those of you who who haven't yet downloaded, you guys should look, download. It's uh, you know I, I don't know why I'm promoting Paytm, but uh, you know it's uh, but I think for anyone who's interested in creating wealth and investing in mutual fund, it's probably the go-to platform. Invest. But uh, the good thing for us is, uh, you know, a platform like Paytm gives us about 600 to 1,000 customers a day, uh, uh, even in these markets, right? Even at times like these, uh, that's the kind of traction that we get from Paytm. Thank you so much, Ajit, for sharing that. It's been a really uh, useful discussion. I think, uh, you know, we'll move on to discussing a little bit on the different types of roles, and it'll be great to have you. Uh, for the Q&A in a few minutes as well to wind up. Sure, 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 sure. I think uh, uh, moving to the different types of digital marketing roles, broadly there are six roles uh, which you can look at, uh, starting with uh, advertising and media. Then you have the social media uh, social media roles. Uh, you have design, creative, and communication roles, which are combined into one bucket uh, for our webinar. Uh, you have content and SEO, uh, technology roles, uh, data science and analytics. So it's a pretty broad mix of uh, different types of roles which you can look at. I've not specifically included broad roles like project managers or management because to really uh, be a good manager in the digital space, you uh, need to at least specialize in one of these uh, before you become a manager. Uh, ideally, uh, as Ajit also was mentioning, you need a more holistic view before you start managing like large teams for any specific uh, vertical itself. So uh, moving a little bit into more detail. Uh, so to discuss uh, the role and skills for each of these uh, different types of roles. So for advertising and media, for example, most of the role is uh, around media planning, like where should you advertise as a brand? And also making sure you're optimizing the campaign to achieve the business objectives for the brand or if you're working in the agency for the client. Uh, the skill sets, a lot of it is analytical skill sets over here. Uh, business mindset is also very important because you need to understand what would customers be searching for, where would they be found, what kind of creative communication would work with uh, which target audience. So, but broadly, if you're analytical and have uh, inquisitive mind for business, I think you could explore the advertising and media role in the uh, company. The second role is the social media role where you're coming up with uh, campaigns or creatives. You're also possibly looking at uh, online reputation management. Yeah, I think you're mostly as a social media specialist or uh, expert internally, you're going to be multitasking a lot between different uh, roles. So if you're someone who's comfortable handling, you know, 10, to do's in your list within a few hours. I think that's when you should explore a social media role. Also, you need to uh, have definitely a more creative bent of mind to come up with campaign ideas uh, to succeed in a social media role. The third role would uh, specifically focus on the creative side. So if you're into design like fo on Photoshop or creators both like statics uh, as well as video content, also looking at like communication, uh, campaigns, copywriters uh, would fit in into the uh, third bucket. Uh, moving to the fourth bucket, you have the content and SEO roles. Uh, here, the main focus is driving organic growth for a brand. So, how do you optimize a website uh, or a mobile app to rank higher on organically on Google so that uh, the brand gets uh, free traffic to their brand? 
here the main skill sets required are like uh, writing so you need to be good in english and uh, able to put down content in writing and also you need to have a good understanding of technical seo so you know i think neil patel is one of the more popular bloggers who's written a lot on seo but even uh, familiarizing yourself with tools like moz or uh, sem rush those would really help uh, for this role the fourth role is the uh, fifth role is technology so here you're looking at either uh, you know building and maintaining websites mobile apps and also i think uh, recently over the last 6 months uh, marketing automation has really started picking up so you know how do you for example use google apis or facebook apis to mine data uh, automate spreadsheets so that you know most of the time for the team is not spent on data gathering but is more spent on uh, data analysis so technology plays a very critical role in terms of both automation and building the front end interfaces for clients and the fifth uh, last role is data science and analytics again this i think in india relative to the west we have not invested as much but you are you need to have like strong analytical skills and the ability to draw like actionable insights from that uh, data which you gather because just having like piles of data in excel sheets or in your database will not help how do you get actionable insights which will help the Well, business scale. Uh, that's the core uh, role in the data science role. Here, yeah, obviously, you need if you have some programming knowledge like Python and uh, you know uh, database management skills, that will be a plus because a lot of the data sets would not were Excel sheet as such as you work with uh, large brands. so we look at like broadly six roles which are there i think in terms of the growth potential for these roles really massive there are over 20 lakh digital marketing jobs which are estimated by end of 2020 and this is only growing end to 15 every year you can see that massive potential in terms of uh, job opportunities in this space what this like for example in a normal company you will get a growth Motion or a role within one and a half two years, or sometimes even three years. Whereas in the digital marketing space, within ten months, if you're doing really well, you can expect like a promotion. So the growth path would be much faster in digital compared to other roles. <laughs> Excuse me. and moving on like where should you apply for these roles i think from uh, our experience at social beat uh, linkedin has become a very big uh, platform where you can apply for roles find out which companies are organizing uh, you know recruitment days uh, or also apply for specific roles in specific companies so while there are platforms like nokli uh, you know consultants which you can go to I think in today's age, like LinkedIn is probably the best bet for any uh, aspiring digital marketer to build a profile, build some certifications uh, for you know basic courses like Google Analytics, uh, get some business understanding for one or two sectors uh, like we were discussing, and then apply for LinkedIn. That's uh, what you know we have seen work well uh, both in terms of recruitment for an agency as well as uh, you know from a candidate's perspective. that was it we are uh, short of time but you know happy to open up for the uh, last couple of questions before we uh, wind up this webinar okay so i think shantanu had a question uh, which it came come in a few minutes back uh, since our business comes from digital what is the criteria you uh, select you know with which medium to communicate your message so yeah so uh, uh, digital you know within I mean, so obviously digital is our largest medium to communicate but within digital uh, like i said our greatest emphasis is on content so we're actually building out a lot of content on blogs and you know, podcasts and and video yeah. content uh, so a lot of effort goes there in terms of engaging with our uh, uh, existing customers the second the second okay Sunil, can you hear me? 
I can hear you. I think it broke up for a second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think my my AirPods ran out of battery. Yeah. So so apart from uh, content, uh, we 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 do a fair amount on 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 display channels as well. But I would say content really is our is our is our most important uh, uh, channel of communication and and engagement. Content. Right. Any other questions? So oh, I think we had a few from earlier. I do. I think uh, one question was around uh, COVID as well, you know, with the coronavirus situation right now, how do you see that impacting like careers? Uh, and, you know, I think a lot of startups are also like firing staff from the news. So how do you see that kind of uh, playing out in the next few quarters? Rajiv? So, uh, it again, it's uh, very difficult to generalize, Sunil, and, uh, and, you know, and, and the person who asked this question. Uh, Different industries are going to react differently to, to COVID and its impact. Uh, but I think, by and large, yes, world will go through a, a, a fairly, uh, you know, slow growth-oriented uh, period. Uh, whether it's negative or positive doesn't matter. It's just that that's what the numbers will be. But I think ultimately, uh, recruitment will slow down, demand will slow down. There's no doubt about it. But uh, yeah. I think the important piece, right, which I uh, and uh, uh, I'm very, very optimistic about this. I think careers in digital uh, will be in highest demand uh, because I think what what will happen post COVID, how long it takes, whether it's six months, eight months. Right. I think this, the impact is going to be longer. There's no doubt about it. The impact will be longish. Some companies will survive, some companies will shut down. So all of that will, will, you know, that will all happen. But I think from a career point of view, people who invested in digital as a career stand to benefit most. Because companies, have, you know, that have gone through pain, will understand now that either you make significant investments in digital through technology processes and people, uh, or you don't survive. Right. So I think the right. point of arrival of digital has actually come, ironically, uh, through this virus. With the uh, virus, right. But uh, but I I'm very very optimistic that uh, you know this is given a shot in the arm. You look at Zoom valuations, for example. Right, uh, it's gone beyond Uber. Um, so even if that was, even if that's very very momentary and it's uh, you know just a transient shift you've seen, but that's one example that you see the power of digital. Look at what we're doing today. We've had webinars for so many years, but uh, you know I'm doing a lot of my calls on Zoom. I'm doing a lot of my calls on Microsoft Teams. Companies will are getting under are getting used to this model and will start to make investments here. Uh, so yeah. I think careers in digital are will actually start to benefit. Sure. No, I think even uh, you know at DigiGrad, the uh, education initiative which you started out, I think the initial plan was to start both online and offline. But I think given like, the virus, I think now we are you know only looking at online courses uh, over the next like three to four months. Yeah, and, you know, I think benefit uh, just to you know to share. I mean, my 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 daughter you know has is actually fairly occupied using you know she has three or four classes a day through Zoom. And uh, right. I actually believe it become my norm. So even if she were to go back to physical classes, I will definitely sign her up for online classes because I didn't know the power of online classes until this happened because we were forced to do it. Uh, uh, you know, so uh, so I think uh, you know people who have careers in digital will actually benefit massively. Right. No, definitely. I think that's why we also you know uh, like ideated on like bite-sized courses, which would be like a few hours. So that people can get started on the digital journey. I think that's what we are planning to launch. I think Abhishek would be sharing a link as well uh, shortly yeah. on some of the courses which we are launching. And this is completely different from the modest operandi we were planning just two weeks back because uh, I think the plan was to go offline, have a detailed uh, coaching. I think, but now, you know, in the new world, like online coaching is going to be as uh, effective and uh, Wanted as offline coaching, people are not going to differentiate uh, too much. Absolutely. Those two. Absolutely. I think one last question was from uh, Shruti Soneji, was on the adaptation of uh, healthcare category in digital. What is your experience uh, there? I think 
so um, uh, let me let me. I mean, let, let me try to. Yeah. My, my experience in uh, in this. So much before Bracto, I did think of a. I think so. I've mentioned to Sunil this briefly. I did think of a business idea on healthcare, uh, which which involved around uh, healthcare uh, cons- online consultation, etc. Uh, I think uh, whatever has happened so far has happened, but look at life post COVID. Uh, healthcare on digital is going to be phenomenal. I don't think we all want to go and sit in a clinic where there are 200 sick patients along with us. right if a doctor yeah. even a doctor would not want 200 patients to come to the clinic any longer so uh, healthcare right. and digital is going to be massive massive it's going to be in my 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 own hypothesis is that that's going to be one of the largest growth areas in in in, in around the world uh, so uh, you know it's going to be phenomenal the the growth you're going to see in healthcare digital right no definitely i think uh, yeah, it's a moment of truth uh, to a large extent as well a lot of online consultations mm-hmm. now it's going through the too, too many ways i think one last question was on online courses versus offline courses uh i'm happy to share my perspective but uh, you know i just online versus right you go ahead i think uh, uh the way we see it you know digital is actually a area where you need to constantly learn so you ideally need to be a self learner so from that perspective online courses are the best but if you can you know learn online uh pick it up and you know build up your skill sets it shows your ability to not just uh learn one time but continuously learn over a period of time over the next few years to you know uh jump start your career i think at the same time you know the reason we were also exploring offline courses in india i think as a, a country used to a little bit of like hand holding and guidance and mentorship uh schools are very like structured in terms of hand holding you through every step and i think when you come out of college you're suddenly expected hey go online learn all the courses on your own and like uh, come back as a expert online and we saw uh, face challenges when you know they've come up uh, uh, for interviews with like online courses but their level of knowledge uh, is not really there i think that obviously shows uh, to a large extent their own motivation levels and you know the ability to pick up from the online courses so what like uh, our recommendation would be to try out online courses and if you're getting stuck then go to a offline course for you know more personal coaching and in person coaching uh by the way online courses should ideally be your first uh, port of call because they are also cheaper uh and they are uh, much more flexible in terms of the timing as well you don't need to like really uh, lock in a time every morning to go to a class so it gives you a lot of flexibility from that perspective Ajit, do you want to add anything there before we? Uh... I think the the point on self learning is uh, is is extremely extremely important. Uh, and the second thing is, uh, you know, it, the thing I like about online learning is that it's 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 it gives you it it democratizes learning in that sense, right? It's a cliched word now, but uh, but I think it, to that extent, you know, you're your own boss. You know, when you can you can, you have time to learn as much as you want. Uh, so it's not like very time bound. If you you know you 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 kind of do your own have your own timetable. but it's you know all of us will become will learn to become more self disciplined all of us will learn to be more self motivated so uh, i i actually am a big big fan of online learning because the 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 you can you get to learn anything you want you're not limited by choices of geography and and, and those kind of uh, uh, right. uh lip, you get to we get to pick up you know modules that you want which are not offered in your area physical area so uh, you get massive options in this uh, so we all should you know actually spend a lot of time on online courses itself online definitely yeah i think the time debate of how much how should you limit your screen time we we'll keep that uh, for another day <laughs> i think in our society also a lot of people spending a lot of time on their screen so that's also turning out to be a challenge in the west correct uh, okay. not be uh, thank you so, uh, so much i think uh, sanjana had some questions on certifications uh, good certification uh courses i think we'll send across a list of you know uh, things you can do to get started online i think uh, digigrad also as a, a training company is starting out some online courses uh, with very uh, affordable fees to start with uh, because our objective also is really not to uh maximize revenue but you know help uh, careers uh, for youth to get started and i think 
given the coronavirus situation, uh, it's never a better time to help uh, young people skill themselves and uh, taking up uh, new opportunities once we come out of this uh, lockdown. So I think Abhishek has shared a screen uh, link uh, for a survey, so you can share your feedback there as well as uh, fill in your details for your interest in the course. I think uh, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Ajit. Uh, I know it's a Saturday, and uh, you know, I really appreciate you taking out time from your family. Uh, from my family, thank you, thank you so much. Time on this webinar. Thank you so much. No, thank you so much. Take care, guys. Everyone, bye.